Hi Leos, welcome to April. This is your general reading for Leo Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, if you're spying on a Leo. So we're gonna look at your overall lesson for April. Um, money and career, your love life, other people, how they're kind of gonna affect your April, your emotional self, and then your crystal of the month. Let's get started. here shuffling your cards a few things jumped out now the first thing I haven't looked at it yet it came up upside down um, uh, like not reverse but like just literally upside down so um, and it comes in the form of a challenge and so it says is cooperation like you co-creating the reality that you want manifesting things into your life through your heart chakra that's challenging for you this month so either you're taking actions but not trusting the universe, or you're trusting the universe, but not taking the steps to help the universe get you what you want, right? Um, so a big lesson for you this month is understanding that every person that we've come across, every situation we've gone through in our life, because it is in the form of a challenge, okay? It's something that we need to learn, our lesson for the month and embrace, is that um, all of these things happen for a reason. There are no accidents, okay? So even though you've gone through maybe like a horrible experience, right? Maybe something horrible happened to you. Perhaps you were raped, okay? Um, that sucks, and it's horrible, and you didn't deserve it. But, you know, there are things that you learned from this, or maybe that's part of your life path, because now you can help as a survivor other people that this happens to, right? So bad things happen to everybody, and some people have a lot of bad things happen to them. But sometimes it's... Um, to sort of like strip away different belief systems that we have, or um, I don't necessarily think that bad things happen to you because of karma sometimes, um, but not from karma, like from past lives and things like that. I think it's only, anyway, my point is, um, you know, like the Bible, the Torah, the Quran, they're all full of stories where, you know, prophets and such, they have these horrible, horrible things happen to them. But why? Because when everything is stripped away, what happens? The only thing that's left is God or your faith or, you know, in angels, spirit, a lot, whatever, the universe, whatever you believe. But that, that inner knowing, that intuition, that's all you have left, right? That connection to spirit. And, you know, with all of these other things around you, if you had all the money, if you had all the love, all the friends, all the wealth, all the luck, would you have that anymore? Would you express gratitude? Probably not. And we know with the law of attraction and with gratitude practices and stuff, that's how things work, right? We only get to keep these things or attract these things if we are doing expressions of gratitude. So I don't mean to like lecture you or get all religious or anything like straight out the gate, but that's kind of the challenge for you this month is to understand that, you know, bad things can happen. But really, um, I'm not going to devalue them and say, oh, they're not bad. No, they feel bad. They feel horrible. But a lot of these things um, happen with a reason. And the point is to understand the reason, right? Like I was in horribly abusive relationships for years. Why? Because now I have the ability when I'm reading tarot cards. And actually, you're going to find this with a lot of... Okay, so... Tarot card readers and psychics and stuff, the best ones, the ones that are most accurate, that can see more clearly, are typically the ones who've had the shittiest lives. Well, why is this? My theory is, is because we only can see inside of, like, the breadth of our own experiences, right? So I could pull out cards and I could tell you, okay, well, you feel like garbage, here's why, here's what's happening, um, but not really make a solid connective understanding. Like some things won't make sense to people who have zero comprehension of that sentiment, of that um, sort of experience, right? Like for example, in cases of abuse, um, okay, well, if so-and-so is hurting you, like on an emotional level, or if they're like, you know, tearing you down or they're beating you up, why don't you just leave? Like that... There's resources in place all the time. You just have to find them. Why don't you just leave? Um, because so somebody else 
that's been through something like that can understand the deeper inner workings of why you stay in there, how you have guilt, why you can't let go of, you know, your hope that they'll turn into a better person. Because, you know, typically this happens to empaths where they can see deep down within somebody they're not all bad. And so you you don't want to give up hope that they're going to, like, express those qualities and become the best version of themselves, even though they often don't. Anyway, that's my point, is, like, a lot of... So bad things happen, right? They feel horrible, but you have to find the hidden meaning, that reason that it happened, which is easier in hindsight. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But just trust that everything is a lesson, that there's beauty in everything, even if it doesn't seem very beautiful, if it doesn't look very beautiful. For example, you know, um, a lot of people don't like this president, right? President Trump, if you're in the United States. A lot of people think he's, you know, horrible, um, that he makes bad decisions, that he's a racist. Okay, but what is the good thing about that? It's easy to just say fucking nothing. But, but, hold on a second. What does it do? It 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 shows it shines a light on serious problems, and it says, okay, so people who used to just be like closet racists, now we see that we can identify it, and we can work on understanding where those beliefs come from, so that we can grow and change those, so that everybody, as like an entire collective, can love one another. So. It seems like things are bad, but sometimes you have to go through bad things to understand the lesson and figure out how to fix it. It's the tower card, breaking down things that were maybe seemed okay or they seemed kind of crappy, but completely burning them to the ground so that new, better things can be built in their place. So that's sort of your theme for the month. Now, what they're saying here is you might not, and again, just kind of like a general overall because these both popped out before I even asked a question. What they're saying is you might not be feeling um, like you want to pour much love into things, especially into things that, you know, painful reflections and whatnot, which happens, especially in a Mercury retrograde, you know, up until April 15th. But they're saying ultimately you want that happily ever after and it is achievable. Um, but if you're not going to actively try to put love into situations to release things, to learn the lesson, um, that's going to be more challenging or it's going to take longer for you than other people who are actively making that effort. So in regards to your kind of a heavy, heavy lesson for Leos, um, so in regards to your money and career, what can you expect in April? And they're saying that's an area where you might feel a little bit hopeless, but ultimately things are really balanced. So if you can feel okay about your financial situation, then it will grow. Do you see how with um, calm emotion instead of worry or doubt, um, all of this water is feeding all of this growth and happiness with the sun and the, and the daffodils? So um, try to stay calm about it. Make, um, be very direct and assertive with the changes that you feel like you need to make or that other people who affect your financial situation need to make. That communication is very, very important. In regards to your love life in April, what do I see? And they're saying things don't change overnight, but this is exactly what we're talking about. You know, when it when we started with that lesson about big changes, the death card here, not unlike the tower card, it's just like closing the door on things from the past, letting them die, and walking through new brighter ones. Combined with this, moving on from difficult emotional situations to ones, you know, like I've taken all, I've got all these lessons now. These thoughts, these lessons used to be under the boat. Now they're in the boat. And she's like, you know what? I'm taking my baby and I'm GTFOing into like a calmer, new energy with the lessons I've learned. I've, instead of living in this, kind of emotional choppy water, you know, where it's like up and down and roller coaster stuff. Now I'm I'm learning with that card before that cooperation of manifesting manifesting love into all of our situations, understanding that every person or experience or situation or circumstance has value. She's doing that and she's taking those valuable lessons with her into like calmer new waters and new opportunities for love. Um, so this could be changing your current relationship. This could be like going from a tough time to smoother times. This could be completely and entirely leaving a relationship in search of something better and more peaceful. Now, how are other people affecting your life in April? And um, other people are going to be giving you new opportunities for stability, maybe um, job, 
It could be like, um, hey, do you want to move in with me and save some money? That kind of a thing. So those things are um, coming for you this month. So make sure that you're aware and open to those things because they say you don't actually have to go out and look for these types of opportunities. They're almost just offered to you on a platter. And so these things will make you very happy and it does signify marking the end of a cycle, um, which this month for Leos is all about that. It's about, okay, what have I learned? Do I want to keep learning this lesson or do I just want to move the fuck on and have a happier life? You get to decide that and people are going to help you along the way, which is very fantastic, but you have to be open to um, taking that help without guilt, okay? Now, your emotional self in April, they're saying you feel like you're kind of out of control. You don't get to control your emotions. You might be lashing out a little bit with other people throughout these change and um, you may not love yourself a ton. You could be living in fear, worry, doubt, that sort of thing, like not really knowing how your life is going to move forward, feeling suspicious, worried about what other people are saying. Um, but basically what they're saying is don't be defensive. And you know, when other people are kind of, kind of barking at you, like this is a bad idea, or, this is a really good idea, or, blah, 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 trying to tell you how to do you, follow your gut instincts. But it's very important for you that you understand the difference between your natural intuition as opposed to your fear, okay? So they're saying, um, yeah, you know, this is going to be a hard work month, but don't give up on yourself before you succeed. Because if you're just going to throw your hands up in the air and say, you know what, fuck it, I'm never going to be happy. That happily ever after card that we started with, like, mm, I'm not going to do anything to achieve that. You know what, like, fuck it. Like, I'm just, my life is just this way. Well, then that's the reality you're going to have. But those of you who want to work through all this emotional stuff and make these important changes, you will get there. Are you going to get there in April? Probably not, because they say it's going to be a hard thing. And for some of you, stability, money, um, where are you going to live? Like if you're running away from, a, from um, you know, a partnership and stuff like that, those are all details that you have to work out. But pay attention to the helpful people around you, because there are people that have to opt. Um, good things to offer you there. They're saying like emotionally, you're going to feel a little bit crazy this month, potentially. Your confidence is lacking. Your creative Leo, you know, courageous and exciting self isn't shining so much um, for you. Like you're not feeling it. Other people still notice that about you. You still appear the same on the outside, but on the inside, you might not be feeling it. So I wonder what are some good strategies for you to kind of um, more fully embrace that trust in the universe or God, spirit, whatever you believe in, and um, to get back your confidence. So I'm going to use two different decks here. Okay. So the first thing is they're like, a lot of you just decided I'm not going to raise my vibration of love. So if you're one who wants to do that, I'm going to put a little um, exercise in the description box below that will help you to do that. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Um, it's in the YouTube playlist here. It's like a one minute video that just shows you um, a very easy way to very quickly raise your vibration and start feeling better. And like another tip or life hack is just smile a lot. You know, even if it's fake, because your your psychology is going to follow your physiology. If you're sitting like all like this and hunched over, you're going to feel like shit, not just because like your back gives out, but like if you sit very tall, like with this dignity and you're smiling all the time, um, other people are going to smile back at you, which is good positive reinforcement. And your psychology is going to follow your physiology. All right. So I'm going to make myself a note. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, so a lot of you just aren't deciding to consciously raise your vibrational energies um, and kind of like pour that love out into the world. And if you don't do that, well, then you're just kind of choosing to sit in this reality. So now the other aspect of this, um, consciously try to raise your vibration, okay? It already said you're not doing enough like self-care. You're not really loving yourself so much. Um, try Make sure that you're, you're taking steps to do that. But then the other side of this is understanding quite a few things. Number one, every single problem has a resolution, okay? Every single problem has a resolution. Every problem you've ever had in the past it's been resolved or it's still going on, but it will at some point change. There is always a resolution. Is it always in your control? 
No, but there is always a resolution. Okay. Number two, the failures and disappointments of the past, they're now behind you. Remember that death card. We're going to close the door on the past and we're going to walk through new energies. Okay. If every person who, like you should just look up these BuzzFeed videos like on Oprah or um, JK Rowling the lady who wrote Harry Potter, like she was suicidal. She was completely bankrupt. Like her husband left her, all these things. Um, like her, she, her life had zero meaning. Okay. And then, um, all of a sudden she's like, while I'm sad, I guess I got to do something. And she starts writing Harry Potter. Now she's like a bajillionaire. Okay. So anyway, we have to accept those failures, disappointments, whatever, leave them in the past and then start something new. Until you leave them in the past, you can't walk through the new door. Okay. Um, I'm going to number three, listen to other people's point of view, but then acknowledge that maybe it doesn't align with me, but at least listen. Okay. Because like I said, other people are going to offer you opportunities. Some of them are going to be worth taking and some people, they just have shit to say. And you know, intuitively, if it feels wrong, then it's wrong. Um, and then just remember that love is the goal here. Loving yourself enough to trust yourself, to trust your instincts, to do what is best for you, okay? Because you can't be loving other people ahead of you. You're going to deplete yourself and you're going to be really depressed. And maybe that's how you got yourself into the situation is a very generous and loving sign. So your crystal of the month, this should help you so much, so, so much. Um, and it's funny because I pull the crystals of the month way before I do the videos because I have to take pictures of them. I have to get them um, posted online and all of these things. So <laughs> isn't it interesting how spirit works? So yeah. Um, so the angels have picked out smoky quartz for you. Now, specifically for Leos this month, the, the cathedral type of um, pointed smoky quartz is recommended as opposed to like a really pretty smoky quartz cluster. Um, let me see if I have one of those right here. Yeah. So, so not so much something like this. Okay. We're going for something more like this. Now, the reason why um, is because there's so much I could teach you about crystals, but is because of the way that it channels and directs energies. Okay. So, if you get this crystal from my website or like whatever crystals from my website, they always come with a crystal playlist that I'm constantly adding videos to how to use them, um, the best ways to use them, blah, blah, blah. But so we could go into more detail there. But the, but the point is, is that um, this is going to help you to channel and direct energies the ways that you, the way that you need it. So what is this crystal good for? Well, number one, this is going to, and this is why it's important for Leo's. It gets rid of negative energy and it replaces it with light energy. And this is what you need very much in the month of April, it sounds like, right? Because that negativity isn't showing to other people, but it's eating away at you inside. And you're starting to feel hopeless and these big changes are needed. And how are you going to do that if you can't get rid of those negative beliefs and fill yourself back up with light? Okay, so this is going to be very helpful in that. Um, it's also going to ground you. So then you know, you're going to feel like you have your feet on the ground, which sounds silly, but it's going to um, help you to take the active physical steps, co-creation again with the universe to get the desired outcomes that you want. It helps you to um, adjust to reality and to your own responsibilities. Um, it gets rid of depression. It helps um, eliminate suicidal thoughts because a lot of you might be having a really rough month. God, I hope not. I really hope that it doesn't get that bad. <laughs> but anyway, this can help. Um, it'll help you to get rid of any thought patterns that are no longer useful. Um, helps you with goal setting. It increases your awareness with dreams. It helps you to quit smoking or drinking or other addictive things. Anyway, there's like a lot of really important things that this stone does. Um, it's kind of like a rescue stone. So... I think this one is a really great pick for you based on your reading because, you know, the reading, it doesn't feel super positive. Um, and that sucks. But I think what the point of the reading is, is to meet you at the level where you are to sh help show you the way out. Okay. Because we don't want any of these negative undertones to seep into me. 
June, July, because that's the thing with spirals. You know, things spiral negatively or they can spiral positively. You ever notice they say bad things happen in threes? Yeah, because we start focusing on that bad thing and then per law of attraction, we attract more and more bad stuff. So when good things happen and we focus on how wonderful that is and we express loads of gratitude for it, all of a sudden we have these very, very lucky days. Right. And so that's my that's my point here is we want to clear away that negative ish, replace it with light so that we can have a more positive May, June, July. This is a transitional month for you, Leos. So it's not going to be easy, um, but it is a good thing for you overall because it's clearing away darkness to step through a new door to overall happiness, contentedness, peacefulness, and then, of course, that happily ever after with the Ten of Cups. So love and light, and see you in May. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!